mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this webinar. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion, nourish the minds of our panelists that they may share their full knowledge on the topic and questions to be asked. We pray that you bless the moderator and the organizers of this webinar that they may be able to fulfill their task responsibly and that the objectives that they have set may all be achieved. We ask these things in your name. Amen. A pleasant afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Department of Trade and Industries live show for the celebration of the Consumers' Welfare Month. I am host, I'm your host today's moderator, ASEC to OPAV, Janji Gonzalez. How is everyone doing? How are you? I hope that all of you are okay, staying safe and healthy in this new normal. In celebration of the Consumers' Welfare Month, today's webinar, we will be talking about COVID health protocols on the various government agencies in Central Visayas namely the Department of Health, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Labor, and the Department of Tourism. A series of videos will be shown from each agency and a panel discussion will then take place after. It is vital that we know the COVID health protocols of each government agency to secure and ensure the public safety in this new normal. But we, before we go straight to the videos, may I call DTI Region 7's Assistant Regional Director, Ms. Nanette Arbonne, to give us the opening remarks for this afternoon's webinar. Again, for those of you who just turned in with us, welcome to DTI Region 7, ready to recover webinar with the topics Strict Talk on COVID Health Protocols. This afternoon, makita natin ang iba't ibang health protocols ng four government agencies in Central Visayas, the Department of Health, Department of Trade and Industry, of Department of Labor and Employment, and the Department of Tourism. Let's kick things off with our first round of videos from the Department of Health and Public Health Protocols. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my half one, my half one asset Jonji. Thank you for agreeing to host this afternoon's webinar entitled Straight Talk on COVID Health Protocols. We're also grateful to our partner agencies, the DOLE or the Department of Labor and Employment, with Regional Director Salome Shaton, ma, uh, with Dr. Mary Jean Lareche, the Chief Pathologist of the Department of Health in Region 7, our Chief Tourism Operations Officer, Ms. Judy Gabato of DOT, or the Department of Tourism, and with our very own Esperanza Belgar, our Division Chief for Consumer Protection of DTI Cebu. As we all know, 
we are now seven months into the COVID pandemic. We are slowly opening up our economy with business activity and, and business activity is gradually picking up. As we do so, the DOH, DOLE, DOT, and DTI have come up with health protocols that our business establishments are supposed to follow to keep our people and our economy on the path to good health. This afternoon, you will get to learn more about these health protocols. It's actually like a review as the health protocols have been drilled down to us over the last several months. The aim here is to expand our knowledge and understanding and promote mindfulness to both our consumers and business establishments. Human as we all are, there is always the tendency to cut corners and go the easy way. In a way, this webinar is designed to remind all of us again and again of the health protocols and our responsibilities towards each other as consumers, business establishments, and fellow human beings. So here we all are still moving forward, celebrating Consumer Month, which is always done in October. Life goes on after all. Our theme for this year is the sustainable consumer in the new normal. And the health protocols are front and center in this thing called the new normal. So friends, get comfortable and let's get on an afternoon of learning and interaction with the four agencies tasked with overseeing the impl implementation of our health protocols. So good afternoon and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Nanette Arbon. Again, for those of you who just turned in with us, welcome to DTI Region 7's Ready to Recover webinar in the topic Straight Talk on COVID Health Protocols. This afternoon, makita natin ang iba't ibang health protocols from the four government agencies in Central Visayas, the Department of, Health, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Labor and Employment, and the Department of Tourism. Let's kick things off with our first round of videos from the Department of Health Health Protocols. Let's go to it. Please watch these videos. Para safe ang pamilya, dapat sa bahay, sanitation ang bida. Maging bida solusyon sa COVID-19. Sa bahay, bawal ya kapag kiss Maligo-ligo muna From head and shoulders to feet At ang damit, 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 damit Na yung ginamit Detergent with bleach Dapat para ang germs Di kumabit sa kids Maging malinit-linit araw-araw Para save si Lola, Tola, ate, kuya Maging malinit-linit araw-araw Para you can be the, be the, be the, be the, be the solution Sa kusina ay hugasan Agad ang mga plato Mas joyful ang Salo-salo Sa mga bagay iwas hawak Para iwas hawak Buong kamay ay hugasan mo na Bawalang walang mask Isanitize ang kamay Tumistan sa isang metro Alamin ang toto Maging malinis, linis araw-araw Para sa buong pamilya, ako, ikaw Maging malinis, linis araw-araw Para you can be the, be the, be the, be the, be the solution Isanitize ang katawan at buong bahay Para you can be the, be the, be the, be the solution Simula sa bahay Maging malinis, cause together we can all be the, be the Be the solution. Be the solution. Be the solution. Ang COVID-19 ay panibagong kontra vida sa buhay nating mga Pilipino. Habang unti-unti tayong bumabangon muli, patuloy ang laban natin dito. Para matalo natin ang kontrabida, we can be the solution. Kaya mong maging bida, basta susundin ito. B. Bawal walang mask. I. Sanitize sa mga kamay. Iwas hawak sa mga bagay. D. 
Gumistansya ng isang metro. A. Alamin ang totoong impormasyon tungkol sa COVID-19. Protektahan natin ang sarili at mga mahal sa buhay. B.I.D.A. Be the solution sa COVID-19. Sa bahay nagsisimula ang kaalaman at paghahanda. Kasabay ng muling pagsisimula natin ay ang bagong pamumuhay para sa ikabubuti ng lahat. Huwag kalimutan na tuwing aalis ng bahay, magdala ng alkohol o sanitizer. Magsuot ng face mask kapag kinakailangan. Sundin ang mga panuntunan ng pampublikong sasakyan, lalo na ang physical distancing. Sumunod sa safety measures na pinatutupad ng pinagtatrabahuhan. Mag-disinfect ng mga gamit bago magsimula ng trabaho. Kung may meeting, panatilihin ang physical distancing. O kung maaari, gawin ito online. At kapag tapos na sa maghapong trabaho, Siguraduhin malinis ang lahat para makaiwas sa sakit. Kung may nabago man sa aming buhay, ito ay ang pagdudobleng ingat para mapangalagaan ang isa't isa at ang kapwa. Dahil ang natutunan sa bahay ay sandata para sa new normal. Sa bahay nagsisimula ang kaalaman at paghahanda. Kasabay ng muling pagsisimula natin ay ang bagong pamumuhay para sa ikabubuti ng lahat. Sundin ang mga panuntunan ng inyong lokal na pamahalaan at lugar na pupuntahan. Sundin palagi ang physical distancing. Pag-uwi, maghugas ng kamay at ihanda ng mabuti ang mga ilulutong pagkain. Kapag may nararamdaman, katulad ng mga sintomas ng COVID-19, kumonsulta sa doktor online gamit ang mga iba't ibang paraan ng telemedicine upang hindi na muna umalis ng bahay. Kung hirap huminga, magpakonsulta ka agad sa pinakamalapit na health facility. Maaari ring tawagan ang inyong Barangay Health Emergency Response Team o BHERT. Ang mga kapamilyang may kasalukuyang karamdaman at mga nakatatanda ay dapat mas ingatan. Kung may nabago man sa aming buhay, ito ay ang pagdudobleng ingat para mapangalagaan ang isa't isa at ang kapwa. Dahil ang natutunan sa bahay ay sandata para sa new normal. Sa pagpakigbatok sa COVID-19 sa atong nasod, importante ang kooperasyon sa matag-usa. Ang pag-uyo sulod sa atong balay, maoy usa sa pinakasimple apan pinaka-epektibong pamaagi aron dili makakalat ang virus. Pananglit, ikaw kining tuldok, himsog og basko. Nigawas sa balay, ang wala ni mo mahibawi, may nakahimamat kag tao nga naay COVID-19. Timan i, lisod mailhan kung kinsa ang dunay virus. Apandali ka ayo kining mapasa sa uban, mahimong napasa na diay niya ang virus nga naha nimo. Sa dihang miubos siya, umihat sing, o posibleng natakdan na kay nakagunit sa parehong mga butang na kontaminado. Karon, aduna ka na'y COVID-19. Giisip ka na nga carrier nga makapanakod sa uban. Kay basin mulutaw paglabay pa sa pipila kaadlaw ang sintomas. Sama sa ubo, sipon, paglisod o ginhawa o hilanan. Mahimo pud nga wala kay gibating sintomas. Apan makapanakod gihapon ka. Pag uli ni mo sa balay, Mahimong makapanakod ka sa imong pamilya. Apil na ang imong lolo o lola o mga ginikanan nimo nga may edad na. Sila ang adunay pinakahinay nga depensa batok sa virus. Ang adunay sakit sa kasing-kasing, diabetes, high blood o uban pang pre-existing conditions o ang mga mabdos. Hinay o ang pangbatok sa COVID-19. 
kung naakdan ang tao nga hinay og immune system, mahimong makaangkon siya og seryoso nga sakit ug kinahanglan nga dadun sa ospital. Sa padayong pagawas sa panimalay ug sa pag-adto sa mga pampublikong lugar, mahimo kang makatakod og tulo pa ka tao ug sila makapanakod ug mas daghan pa. 20% sa natakdan mahimong maospital, managhan ug managhan kini samtang nikatag pa ang virus. Sa nakadaghang pasyente sa COVID-19, may daghan pang dunay sakit nga anaa sa mga tambalanan. Ang mga pasyente nga naglisod ang kahintang, dili na maatiman. Wala nay lugar alang sa mga pasyenteng adunay laing gihambing balatian. Kaya natong likayan ang padayong pagkuyanap sa COVID-19. Kung naghuna-huna kita sa kaayuhan sa uban, kinahanglan natong maghuna-huna o muaksyon na murag bit-bit na nato ang virus. Aron dili na kinimukalat pa sa uban. Sunda ang social distancing. O kung mahimo, magpuyo kita sulod sa atong balay. Kung kinahanglan yod nga mugawas, pirmeha ang usa ka metro nga gilayon sa ubang tao. Kinahang ng limpyo ang atong lawas o ang palibot. Pirming manghugas sa kamot gamit ang sabon o tubig. O i-disinfect ang mga butang na pirming gigunitan. Ang importante, atong mapahinayan ang pagkuyanap sa COVID-19. Aron mo gamay ang kinahang lang magpa-ospital. O makuhaan ang mga Pilipinong nagkasakit. Mahimong epektibo lamang kini. Kung magpermanente kita sa atong balay, sundon ang social distancing. Usa ka gamay sakripisyo alang sa si kinabuhi sa sama natong mga Pilipino. Magtinabangay kita. Atong sugpuon ang COVID-19. Datos sa Department of Health's Public Health Protocols on COVID-19. Seven months after we were declared ECQ, the entire country was placed on lockdown. We are now starting to gradually reopen the economy. And for us, we have to learn to live with COVID and to start living the new normal. We'll be able to open gradually the economy. And on this uh, talk, straight talk on COVID health protocols, DOH7 was able to show us the video on how to be able to live with COVID. Now, let's uh, go next to our next topic. To those of you who are watching this live stream, let us uh, ne go to the next video from the Department of Labor and Employment about the COVID health protocols in the workplace. Let's get to it. Please watch this video. workload and low compensation during the COVID-19 pandemic are causing burnout and possible mental disorders in workers according to mental health advocates. Likewise, according to RJ Nugget, the chairman of the Youth for Mental Health Coalition Incorporated, the lack of psychological support from their superiors and equal distribution of workload and the need to comply the deadlines may also affect the workers' mental health. We at the DOLE firmly believe that identifying determinants of stress and burnout in the workplace, especially at this time of the pandemic, should form part of the safety and health program of the companies. Hence, we, we begin this presentation with a vital part which is increasing on physical and mental health resilience. The DOLE for its part will begin conducting webinars on mental health for the employees tomorrow, October 17. With this kind of psychological support provided to them, we hope that we are able to let them feel that the workplace is being humanized and that their mental health concerns are being addressed. Now, this is as important as seeing to it that the minimum public health standards are complied with in workplaces with the ultimate goal in mind of preventing and or reducing transmission of the infamous COVID-19 virus.
how can establishments promote this advocacy? Everybody must be aware of these guidelines and management should ensure that everything is thoroughly understood by way of conducting advocacy awareness raising programs which are mandatory. To ensure proper implementation of these guidelines, the Occupational Safety and Health Committee shall facilitate the conduct of webinars, lectures, and trainings on COVID-19 prevention and control, including best practices that should be attended by all employees and managers. What is to be done should there be a COVID-19 testing? Who are the priority workers who may undergo the RT-PCR test? What types of industry are being covered? So far as the Safety and Health Committee is concerned, employers shall establish an OSH committees and or appoint safety officers of the workplace who shall oversee the enforcement and monitoring of the public health standards for COVID-19 prevention. For two or more establishments housed under the same building, a joint OSH committee shall With the institutionalization of the TI Dolly Joint Memorandum Circular 20-04-A, where all of these guidelines have been put in place, we at the DOLE fervently hope that the workers and employers will work hand-in-hand in, hand in fighting this virus. Equally important is also the promotion of mental health in the workplace. What is not given priority before and what used to be viewed as taboo should now be given enough attention and emphasis. As a result of the pandemic, the need for medical health services, especially among the workers, have become clearer. But most of them do not seek treatment due to the high cost that medical and psychiatric consultations entail. Making mental services accessible, cost-effective, and sustainable for the workers is a challenge to all employers. With all these restrictions and limitations that the pandemic has caused us, Let's remain optimistic and hopeful that the continued collaboration will get past this pandemic together. That was the Department of Labor and Employment's COVID video health protocols in the workplace. It is not a choice between economy over health as Secretary Mike Dino of the Office of Presidential Assistant for the Visayas has been telling us, it's confidence. 
no matter how you try to open the economy because we need to learn to live with COVID and to also make a livelihood, make a living, go back to our workplace. If there is no confidence, then it will be very difficult. That's why the Department of uh, Labor and Employment it's best to help us live with COVID and to also help us uh, go back to go to the new normal. To those of you who are watching this live stream, if you have any questions, concerns, or clarifications regarding the agency's health protocols, don't forget, because after two more videos, we will be having our panel discussions. Moving forward, let's proceed to the next video from the Department of Trade and Industry on their COVID health protocols for business establishments under its jurisdiction. Let's go to it. Please watch this video. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Mayong hapon. As we are now celebrating the Consumer Welfare Month, my presentation this afternoon will focus on the health protocols required of business establishments. Another would be uh, customers and workers exhibiting symptoms such as cough, colds, or difficulty in breathing are to be politely declined entry. Another would be uh, personnel with COVID-19 symptoms or with exposure to COVID-19 patients shall not be allowed to work. And of course, as part of uh, in complying with uh, physical distancing, chairs allowed to be occupied should be distanced at least one meter on all sides. And if possible, proper ventilation and exhaust system should be in place in the establishment. And lastly, the restroom should be properly sanitized and free of accumulation of trash. Now, additional mandatory requirements for the operation of barber shops and salons would include the regular sterilization of equipment or tools that will be used you know, for every, before and after every client. Unless absolutely necessary, companions are not allowed entry. Other than the mandatory requirements, barber shops and salons are also enjoined to implement the following measures. Posting of information at the entrance and other conspicuous area of the barbershop or salon. This would include information on mandatory wearing of face masks, physical distancing, maximum number of allowable persons, the availability of alternative methods of payment if applicable, and even the required health declaration forms or online registration. The salons are also enjoined to enforce the following protocols in relation to their employees. This would include not letting their workers work in case they would show symptoms of COVID-19 or have been exposed to COVID-19 patients. Um, employees are also not allowed to wear pieces of jewelry and they must be wearing the required personal protective equipment, which would include but not limited to the face mask, the face shield, the hair cups, and the gloves. If possible, they should wear aprons. Other than that, employees should be wearing closed shoes at all times and there should be observance of proper disposal of single-use supplies, such as tissue, the cotton balls, and of course, the frequent hand washing and sanitizing by the employees. At the entrance of the barbershops and salons, the following should be placed, such as the floor mat or foot bath with disinfectant, the use of the thermal scanner for temperature reading, and of course, the availability of the alcohol that should be sprayed on the client's hands, the health checklist, or if you have the online registration, it should be available at the entrance, and if possible, a system where the personal effects of the client can be disinfected and placed in secured sanitary plastic bags. Now, the barbershops and salons are also enjoined to enforce the following protocols. This would include distancing of chairs of at least one meter apart on all sides, the floor markings which should be visible to all, proper ventilation, and face masks be readily available for sale or otherwise to clients. Sanitizing of equipment and tools should be visible to the clients. And pieces of furniture that are made of porous materials must be covered in plastic for ease of cleaning. And strict use of disposable only reading materials and magazines. Barbershops and salons are also required to follow these procedures upon exit. No physical contact upon payment, so they should provide small trays to accept cash. And if possible, they also would uh, make available altern alternative modes of payment. Um, frequently touched areas and surfaces should all be regularly sanitized. For areas under GCQ and MGCQ, barbershops and salons are already allowed to operate to 75% operational capacity. Now let's now go to the dine-in restaurants and fast food establishments. In addition to what has been discussed earlier on the common mandatory minimum requirements for operation of barbershops and restaurants, dining restaurants and fast food establishments are, are required to implement the following. Physical distancing.
distancing even at the queuing area. For face-to-face -face seating, plastic barriers should be in place. Otherwise, chairs shall be positioned diagonally to avoid face-to-face -face seating. Uh, Self-service is not allowed. For buffet services, food servers should be present and all food trays are with food covers. And for fast food establishments, play areas shall be closed. Dining restaurants and fast food establishments are also enjoined to implement additional control measures. This would include the posting of relevant information at the entrance and other prominent areas of the restaurant or fast food establishment. Information would include maximum number of allowable persons, the no face mask, no entry policy, the social distancing protocols, alternative methods of payments, among others. Another control measure would be the provision of food menus per table, preferably single-use or QR code-based menus, implementation of contactless order taking, and having the furniture of porous materials covered with plastic for easy sanitation. Restaurants at fast food establishment should also ensure proper health and safety of all personnel at all times. They should also observe the proper disposal of their disposable utensils, plates, and equipment, and also observe and enforce the customer personnel contact protocols. In addition, uh, restaurants and fast food establishments should, should also implement the no physical contact policy during payment. For cash payments, the establishment should provide small trays for payments and they should designate the manager on duty or any person to oversee compliance of this d 2 circular 2039. Food establishments that offer delivery and takeaway services are also enjoined to implement the following protocols. Mechanism for taking orders through phone calls, email, or online or any online mode. Implementation of staggered delivery hours for drivers. Designating pickup areas outside the establishment are properly marked. And the establishment should ensure proper sanitation of the vehicles and compliance by the driver and personnel with safety and sanitation protocols. Dining restaurants and fast food establishments in GCQ areas are allowed to operate at 50% capacity, while those food establishments under MGCQ areas such as Cebu, are allowed at 75% operational capacity, provided that physical distancing is strictly observed and are and subject to the corresponding local government guidelines. With the minimum health standards and protocols required of barbershops and salons, as well as dining restaurants and fast food establishments, I hope we as consumers will also do our part. Let's cooperate and comply with what is expected of us. Thank you and happy Consumer Welfare Month. All right, that was the Department of Trade and Industries COVID Health Protocols for Business Establishments under its jurisdictions. You know, COVID is here to stay, and like any other uh, diseases, like flu, it has been around us for the longest time. So your government, through DOH, DOLE, DTI, is helping you live with COVID and helping you also embrace the new normal. So um, let's just uh, learn to accept this uh, COVID and proceed with our lives so that we can get back to where we started. And uh, we are down to our last video. In a short while, we will be having our panel discussion. So stay tuned and join the discussion. Without further ado, let's proceed to our last video from the Department of Tourism on COVID health protocols for the tourism sector. Let's go at it. Please watch this video. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to present to you uh, the memorandum circular issued 2020-002 uh, on the operations under the new normal health and safety guidelines governing the operations of accommodation. Now, what are the areas of cover? Number one is the guest handling. Now, the guest handling policy operations under the new normal should have a completion of health declaration form upon check-in. Online payment is encouraged upon booking. Body temperature checking before entry using thermal scanner, physical distancing measures, hand hygiene, and respiratory etiquette must be observed when handling guests at the check-in counter. Now we go to the reception and concerns. 
The following has to be implemented, official up-to-date information and travel advisories, availability of medical kit and PPE at the reception counter or guest. So in the mandatory, we require germicidal disinfectant or wipes for surface cleaning, face mask or face shield, biohazard disposal waste bag, 70% solution alcohol or alcohol-based hand sanitizer, tissue paper, napkin, or paper towel, and disposable gloves. Now we go to the rooms and housekeeping. On this single up to double room, occupancy is allowed. Room transfers may be allowed when necessary. Rooms must be set up to allow convenient in-room dining for guests. Room turndown service is highly discouraged. Now we go to food and beverage services. We require for it's more fun in the Philippines. A is that food and beverage personnel must uh, strictly observe proper hygiene at all times. Guests must be reminded to disinfect their hands upon entering and leaving the vicinity. And the last one is the grab and go station must be made available. So we have again a partner on the food and beverage service. Banquet tables can be accommodated 10. Guests must accommodate only five guests. Distance between diners shall be at least one meter apart. Now we go to the kitchen sanitation and disinfection. Number one is the separate hand washing area for kitchen staff must be provided or installed. Kitchen staff should wash hands thoroughly. Kitchen staff must wear proper PPE when handling food. Hand and exposed portions of arms must be washed before any food preparation or packaging. Now we go to must have, most especially the public areas in a hotel or a resort facility or accommodation facility. General or common areas like the public area with sanitizing mats must be available at all entry points. Physical distancing must be strictly observed when using elevators. Only 50% of the maximum capacity and placing of floor markers to delineate physical distancing are encouraged. Sanitation station must be set up within the workplace and areas frequented by customer and guests. Placement of signs reminding guests and general public to minimize touching of surfaces in public areas is highly recommended. Adequate supply of soaps and alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Recreational areas or facilities such as gym or wellness centers children's areas, sports facilities, swimming pool, etc. may be allowed to operate, but with strict observance of Department of Health prescribed minimum public health standard. For hotel transport service, standard passenger capacity of each type of vehicle will be decreased or reduced by 50% or one apart. Hotel transport vehicles must be sanitized and disinfected after every use. Now we go to the engineering and maintenance services of the accommodation establishment. The concentration of disinfectant in water for consumption, swimming pools, and spas recommended based on international standards must be regularly maintained. The condition of the filters must be regularly monitored at the proper replacement. Rate of indoor air must be maintained. Now we go to business practices and management shall adapt the following protective measures in response to the threat or any infectious disease that can cause negative impact to the tourism industry. Number one is the development of an integrated emergency preparedness action plan sufficient human and economic capital to implement the action plan, supervision and monitoring of the progress of the implementation of the action plan, 
conduct regular updates and meetings to discuss the progress of IPAP. Relevant policies are properly cascaded across all concerned managers, employees, and staff. Designation of a hygiene and safety manager. Now we go to the management of symptomatic guests following the Department of Health guidelines. The following measures must be complied with in the management of symptomatic guests. Number one is create a holding area for symptomatic guests. Two, immediately refer guests with flu-like symptoms to the nearest hospital. Three, assure guests of assistance in case they begin to manifest symptoms such as fever or cough. And number four, keep the symptomatic guest confined in the room originally used until trained transport providers are available to transport him or her to designated referral hospital. Five is coordinate with the referral hospital for necessary transportation of symptomatic guests. Now we go to the notification referral on the pandemic COVID-19. Following again, the Department of Health guidelines, accommodation establishment must have a record and analyze guest list for persons coming from countries that have reported confirmed cases of the current disease. Thank you very much and have a good day, everyone. So, and that's it for the Department of Tourism's COVID health protocols for the tourism sector. You see, Central Visayas is the epicenter of tourism in the country. And as Sec Mike Dino of the Office of Presidential Assistant for the Visayas says, there is a lot of activities in tourism and we have lost it during the pandemic. So it is about time that we have to really work hard to reopen, restart our tourism economy. And uh, with this, uh, the good thing is Lapu-Lapu is now trying to reopen their um, tourism and uh, Bohol is also reopening soon and thanks to DOT and DOH for providing technical assistance to the stakeholders so that very soon this uh, tourism, the Central Visayas as epicenter of tourism activities will start to uh, flourish. All right, as I have mentioned earlier, after all four videos from the respective government agencies are shown, we will have our panel discussion. So let's not prolong this and let's get our panel discussion started. Let me introduce to you this afternoon's panelists. Department of Health Region 7's Chief Pathologist, Dr. Mary Jean Lorece, Department of Labor and Employment Region 7's Regional Director, Salome Siaton, and Department of Trade and Industry, Cebu Provincial Office Division Chief, Ma'am Esperanza Melgar, and Department of Tourism's Region 7 Chief Tourism Operations Officer, Ms. Judy Gabato. Thank you, panelists, for being with us here. Let's start our discussion. We are now trying to uh, get you to make your questions. If you have any, just uh, write down your comments on the page. Uh, for now, can I start to ask the question? And let me start with uh, Dr. Jean Lorece, who helped uh, Bohol and uh, Lapu Lapu City provide recommendations on how to reopen the tourism industry. Dr. Lorece? So anyway, um, we're trying to reconnect with uh, Doc Lorece. Can I now go to uh, the Department of uh, Labor and Employment, Ma'am Salome, Salome Siaton? If you can tell us how important is her mental health, you were uh, making your presentation and uh, you were talking about mental health in the workplace in this time of COVID. How important is it and what is uh, uh, Dole really doing to reach out to the business sector so that uh, 
we will be able, the business sector will be able to address this problem that is creeping in their workplace. Even Senator Bongo is advocating, the, uh, you know, helping out, reaching out to the people, especially to the workers who are badly hit by this pandemic and so that they'll be able to address mental health issues in the workplace. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the One of the first uh, slides I have done and the discussion at the end of my talk uh, was on the mental health because this is an issue that we have not addressed and we are happy that in 2019, there was an issue once of crafting companies are required to craft through Department Order Number 208 to craft the mental health uh, policies in the workplaces because this is an area where uh, where employers have to look into that there are already mental health issues uh, uh, suffered by their employees and yet we cannot track because it takes uh, it takes really a parang practitioner to look into this. However, because of this pandemic, nadagdagan ito because a lot of uh, mga cases natin nag-increase. So therefore, anong ginagawa? Now, in the presentation, if you'll notice, going back into 20, uh, parang joint circular 20, the 04 das A, itong ating employees, employers are also required to provide psycholog uh, psychological support to their workforce, especially those showing mental health uh, issues. So, anong psychological support? Dapat magkaroon tayo ng referral system to accredited mental health specialists. And also, we have to promote, promote work-life balance. Kasi doon sa workplace, eight hours sila doon. Kung minsan uh, noon, nag uh, more than eight hours. So, therefore, hindi natin alam na mayroon na palang siya suffering doon. So, dapat magkaroon na ito ng action on the part. Of, kasi doon, yung, din, doon nila ma-detect yung mga hindi normal na mga behaviors ng tao nila. So, Dolly, right now, in fact, tomorrow, we are inviting also some of you. Nag-invite na kami, by the way, ASEC yesterday. There was already a joint meeting with the uh, CCI together with DTI also. Proactive kami, ASEC, ha? Kasi problema na natin ito pagtutulungan na. Yesterday, we were invited by the CCI, uh, Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, at saka nag-invite na kami kasi Dole and also um, with the rest of our stakeholders are now joining us with the webinar on mental health. So tomorrow, malaking activity ito. Pumapasok na si Tima, pumapasok na si CCI, at pumapasok na ibang sectors para lang we can spread that mental health is an important component in the workplace that employers should really address to. So yun ang pinaka-importante. Marami na kaming nangya, nagawa na mga webinars on this sa mga partner institutions and Dole is the one sponsoring this. Now ngayon yung ating Bohol, no? so yung Bohol na ating uh, Bohol Tripartite Industrial Peace Council, nag-sponsor na sila. Kasi maganda ang ating ano dito ASEC, lalo na sa nagikinig ngayon. Uh, Naka-invite na rin kami sa DTI. I think DTI baka nandoon na sa pa FB page niyo. Tomorrow is 1 o'clock. Magkaroon na dito. So online ito. Free ito ha. So Dolly is the one sponsoring. Maka-accommodate kami ng 500 dito. Nagbigay kami ng slot sa PMAP with CCCI. No, 150. And we are inviting uh, some because... Uh, Kailangan natin ito ma-address together at saka we need a person who is really an authority to the area kasi taga-UP professor siya at saka talagang part siya doon when this laws were conceived of. So, yun lang ang masabi ko ngayon. Uh, yung multiplier effect natin doon is we are conducting these webinars for free and we have done a lot already and we are on Facebook Live. Maraming nag nagtitinginan. So yung that's the advocacy of Dole relative to mental health. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Salome Shaton of the Department of Labor and Employment. And indeed, uh, mental health is a very important issue and concern that government has to continue to address, uh, especially in this time of COVID. And uh, I'll try to get back to Dr. Loretche uh, and ask uh, her the question of how 
uh, DOH is trying to help reopen, restart the tourism industry in Central Visayas uh, with their technical assistance being provided uh, to the stakeholders of the tourism industry. Dr. Alreche? Yes, um, presentation. So, we have to be in place if we are really going to open up our tourism industry. At tayo naman ay nagagalak because we are able to help. Um, in, in, for instance, in Lapu Lapu, I was told that uh, they really institutionalized the reopening of their economy by passing a executive order, and they are even conducting um, community testing. Uh, sa mga boat operators, around 400 of them have already undergone testing. What other protocols are you trying to uh, inform or provide um, the LGU and even DOT so that um, they'll be able to safely reopen and restart uh, the tourism uh, industry in Central Visayas? So there are two ways of looking at it. Number one is the test protocol for those who are going to come you know, to our places and enjoy the spots that we have because Central Visayas is truly blessed in terms of the natural resources, no? beaches and the like. No? Pero pangalawa din, we have to consider the testing protocol for our people who are living in the locality. Mahalaga kasi ito eh, for us to be able to boost the the confidence of the people coming in for our tourism. That means we have to make sure that the people from outside will know and understand and feel that the people who are manning the yung kagaya ng mga boatmen natin, yung mga tao na naghahawak ng mga drivers ng ating mga vans, no? including yung mga nagmaman sa ating mga resorts, the hospitalities. No? So kailangan yan sila ay assured yung mga tao na papasok that these are people who have been tested negative. And thirdly, we need to be able to also understand that workplace standards is very important and essential. Hindi naman po pwede test tayo ng test, pero the workplace standards of our partner industries ay hindi in place. So dapat pati sila no, should be with us in our, in our drive to make our places safe for our tourists. <laughs> So uh, thank you, Dr. Lorette, and let me go to uh, Ma'am Judy Gabato of DOT. How important, and I'm sure uh, it's really very vital that we very soon reopen, restart the tourism industry. And so my question is, how badly hit is the tourism industry in Central Visayas being the epicenter of tourism uh, activities in the country? Good afternoon. Yes, Mom Judy, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Open on Mom Judy, did you get my question? Yes. Kindly, kindly. Can you repeat again, please? It's cutting off. But I think there's something wrong with the internet. Okay. Um, the tourism industry in Central Visayas is, uh, was a flourishing. In fact, it provided uh, a big portion of the economy uh, with the needed dollars and uh, money that was plowed into the economy because of the tourism industry. It was badly hit during the pandemic. And uh, how badly hit was it? And how important is it to reopen and restart the tourism industry in Central Visayas. Uh, okay, uh, the, the COVID-19 actually outbreak has created a 
we would say a global no? global health crisis that has a deep impact on our everyday lives even the government no all to all this uh president assessing of the enhanced the modified now gcq and now we are on the ngcq and the most affected is um, the tourism industry the Uh, Ma'am Judy, are you? Hello. Are we having trouble with the? Uh, yes, Ma'am Judy, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I think we have really a problem with the internet. Anyway, uh, it's like this. Now, as me, I repeat that the most um, affected. This is really a global crisis for us. This pandemic and uh, the most affected in the street and. Uh, the DOT that the one that we presented to you is actually is our the new normal and health uh, safety guidelines governing the operation of accommodation establishment because this is really the, the most uh, important no the health and safety guidelines is needed to promote uh, minimum health and safety standards among tourism accommodation establishments in order to contain of course the spread of pandemic prevent health emergencies and ensure the safety of our guests which is the most important and employees alike while maintaining the business continuity amidst this negative impact caused by covid pandemic and number one also it also helps to regain confidence hopefully no from our guests to travel stay in hotels and other uh, accommodation facilities Uh, okay, so now let's go to um, Mom Esperanza Melgar of the DTI. Uh, as uh, I keep repeating, confidence is very important to restart the economy. And this uh, straight talk on COVID health protocol is really on online because it hopefully will create confidence in uh, the people who are badly affected, people will start coming out, they need to go to the malls, they need to eat out, they need to go back to their workplace. And so um, to be able to achieve uh, confidence, very important is the role of uh, the Department of Labor and Industry because they have to be able to help capacitate the workplace to make it safe. And my question, uh, Mom, uh, oh, DTI. My question to DTI is: How are you reaching out with uh, to the MSMEs, to the big corporations? And I'm sure um, you know uh, the Chamber of Commerce is working very closely with DTI and Dole to be able to make sure that the workplace is safe and MSMEs be able to set up their own health protocols. And how are you reaching out to these uh, MSMEs, Mam Melgar? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Asik Johnji. No, because um, basically in partnership with uh, Dole, we have been like visiting um, companies in the past few months, and during the visit, like we like uh, we provide them guidance on how to comply with these health protocols. So it's it's really a combination of the um, small and medium enterprises in the manufacturing industry as well as in the retail industry. So we have been providing them support, um, guidance, and how to comply. And in relation to the tourism industry, uh, we are also like supporting the DOT and like the, the project of Governor Gwen. We are part of the task force because um, though it's tourism, we um, we are concerned about the value chain, the tourism value chain, where there, we're, we're in the realm of uh, micro and small enterprises. So we are active in the task force. So like. Uh, other than providing them, uh, for for example, for the for the for those who have lost their businesses, uh, we have already provided them uh, seminars on how to get back and even some technical assistance. So you're okay. providing technical assistance to the MSMEs, uh, Mam yes. Engar. Yes. Yes. Asset Mm-hmm. And uh, 
well uh, you providing technical assistance to the msme is uh dole also doing the same uh, in the workplace to be able to make it uh, safe so that uh, um, you know people will start going back to their work and uh, the economy will start to run again uh, my question to make the workplace safe uh, and so that the transmission inside the workplace would be, uh, you know, uh, um, So I said, although the, the audio is not so clear, but I can, I can sense yung, yung, yung line of questioning. Uh, Dole and DTI has the guideline, which I mentioned even in what I have to uh, talk kanina, and that is through joint uh, DTI Dole uh, na circular na 20-04-A. Now, we have the checklist, and we are visiting the workplaces, physical. During the ECQ, nag-device kami na parang we will not go to the area, but we can send the the checklist. Yung technical assistance doon if there will be Sir, may sound kasi akala ko nag-uusap pa kami. Asik ako na ngayon yung mag-answer. Ah, okay. Sir. Kasi may sound ako. Akala ko nag-uusap pa. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, going back to my discussion, there is DOLE joint guidelines uh, relative to workplace prevention and control of COVID-19. So DOLE, the, uh, DTI. Uh, we are together with DTI in looking into in terms of compliance to health protocols na ito na sinasabi natin at saka yung workplace para ma-prevent at ma-control yung spread. So, si Dole at DTI, may checklist tayo of what are those things to be complied with by companies. If they are not compliant at the time when the team will visit, what they will do is tulungan natin sila. We are giving them a period of five days to comply para hindi na ito ano. Kung hindi nila kaya, then tutulungan sila. Because in each company, there is an occupational safety and health uh, practitioner doon sa company na designated ito ng kanilang employers. So, sila ang ating entry point doon. So, pagpunta, titingnan ang ng checklist anong extent of compliance together with the safety officer. So, kung hindi pa nila, dapat yung sinasabi kanina ni, ni, ni ng ating DTI, si SP, sabi niya, nagtulong tayo through technical assistance. The technical assistance will be dependent on the kind of uh, kung anong hindi nila na comply as far as yung guidelines is concerned. So, nandoon yan. Ano yung mga areas na tingnan? Una-una yung uh, mayroon ba silang policy doon sa kanilang physical and mental resilience ng tao? Mayroon ba silang may psychological support? So, kung wala, ano yung ginagawa? Tapos, how do we reduce transmission? Marami na kami, common na kami kanina, DOT, DDOH, kasi itong guideline na to, under ito, pinakalo din natin yung protocol as directed to us by DOH. So, of course, wearing of masks and to reduce transmission, i-insure natin talaga whether you are with the, with the uh, mga hotels and restaurants as regulated by DOT, kung health ka man, hospital ka man, you are the 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 things that our team will be looking into is compliance related to those uh, to reduce the transmission wearing of masks, uh, uh, face shields, physical distancing, display of signages, tapos yung physical distancing. So common ito sa lahat na, na agencies na itong push natin in general. So yung shuttle services dapat avoid talking no eating and no talk, no, no no taking of parang calls doon so itong mga lahat ito ay pinatutulungan natin so isa kami ng DTI dito at saka may palagi kaming may mga meetings weekly to look into so yung close coordination is nandito sa amin 
Thank you, uh, Ma'am Elgar. I'd like to ask you one more question. But, uh, um, and uh, the question is, yung MS, MSME is, uh, you know, they are about 90% of the businesses in the country and even, I think, Central Visayas. How are you helping them cope up with this pandemic? Okay. Um, um, basically, as if John G, we have like um, different programs in supporting this, especially the micro enterprises, because they're the ones greatly affected. So, like, um, we have this negotiable service, a barangay, uh, livelihood seeding program, where in through our negotiable center counselors, we provide them uh, livelihood kits after briefing them on entrepreneurial mindset setting. So basically, that's being done throughout the region. And other than that, through the financing arm of DPI, which is the SB Corp, um, we have this SB Cares financing program, which is available to micro and small enterprises. Um, there, are, uh, there have been already a lot of um, entrepreneurs that have availed of it. And of course, other than that, uh, we have this ongoing, because as you mentioned earlier, through the pandemic, our programs now are course, a lot of it are course through, the, uh, through webinars. A webinar program so we've been doing regular um sessions uh, like two weeks the past two weeks we had that pitch party for contact tracing apps so the, the establishments can also like use this um contact tracing apps which which were developed uh, by our startups here in the region and this webinar that you're having right now this is part of our consumer welfare month um, so basically also this is um, applicable to this is open to for the learnings of our um, um, micro small and medium enterprises and in fact next week we'll also be having other other webinars for the youth for the youth uh, who are existing or potential entrepreneurs Now, a question to all of you. Uh, here. Thank you, Ma'am Elgar. Um, a question to all of you, and uh, uh, let's start with Dr. Jean Loretche, then uh, followed by Ma'am Salome Chaton, then um, Ma'am Esperanza Melgar, and finally, Ma'am Judy Gabato. My question is, because this is strict talk on COVID health protocol, how is the compliance of your stakeholders like uh, let's say for dot the tourism sector for dti msmes uh, for dolly the workplace how are they complying with health protocols and for doh what is your um assessment in the compliance of every uh, stakeholders in central visayas on health protocols so dr Lorece. I ASEC, no? So we will, sa, sa Department of Health kasi, we are here to be able to give technical guidance also, as well as um, help out in the monitoring for our clients also. Minimum health standards. We, we always say this, that best is just part of the protocol for us to save open our economy. But it is actually the strict it is actually the strict implementation of the protocols, the public health measures that will play a huge role for us to be able to fight off the pandemic. And so the Department of Health, and uh, I am saying this now personally, um, I believe that for us to safely open our tourism, we should do it gradually. It should not be something that we open up immediately 100%, but rather do it maybe 30% like the Balik Turismo project of the Lapu-Lapu City, wherein you can start with 30% and then after that you can assess the ethics or three weeks after you can go to 50% until such time that we're confident that everybody is truly um, complying with whatever they are expecting to comply with. So once we inspection. have this in place, I believe that kain kaya natin ito. So inspection naman, um, Department of Health can actually help the, the DOLE and DTI on uh, the implementation and the strict compliance. Kasi tingnan po natin to know when we do our, we conduct our um, spot checking, 
we will also be able to give feedback. So better siguro, I would like to go back to ASEC Junji, if you don't mind, no? I would like to discuss briefly also Project Balik Buhay. Kasi itong Project Balik Buhay, kasama tayong lahat dito eh. So the business sectors, I, I believe the Chambers of Commerce, has created their checklist based on which is pinagsama at pinagtagpi doon sa bagong joint circular ng, D, ng DTI at saka ng DOLE. And uh, in the checklist, and isolation protocols. So kung siguro kung magagawa natin ito, pagsasamahin natin, and then we will create a team that will be able to conduct the monitoring and do the necessary recommendations and guidances, lectures, webinars, and teachings. I Dora Lurette, can I hear from Ma'am Salome Shato? Uh, compliant of uh, Dole, how is it? Uh, as of now, uh, result ito na ng joint Dole DTI, yung pag-monitoring, joint monitoring. As of now, we were able to inspect 3,600 plus establishments. 3,600 3, uh, plus establishments here in Region 7 with a compliance rate of 82%, meaning of the 3,600 plus establishments inspected using the checklist on based on the guidelines. Uh, 3,600 plus getting 82%, this number is, are compliant. Yung sinasabi kanina na SP, nagkaroon tayo ng technical assistance doon sa mga 18% na hindi pa compliant. So the technical assistance is ongoing ito, uh, working together with the rest of their OSHPRA, your, yung occupational safety and health nila na kailangan doon sa workplace, uh, doon tayo nag-work with them. So yun ang ating scenario in Region 7. Pero yung sinasabi kanina ni Doc na balik, Balik buhay something. Yesterday it was discussed thoroughly. Project Balik Buhay. Uh, uh, Project Balik Buhay. Si Sir, ano yun? Uh, si, sa, NEDA, sa NEDA, yung sa economic development natin na uh, sector. So nag-push siya doon. Uh, the standard that has to be, uh, basic standard would be the DTI Dole Guideline. Yung more doon, uh, yun ang igagawa ng further checklist kasi for you to comply the basic muna then you go beyond. Then there could be parang award or reward or whatever. Kapag magbigay sila ng award sa certain company, kung ako nagpo-promote ng tourism in Cebu, I'd rather look into this companies kasi compliance na dito sa mga standards na ito. So, yung ating gagawin is, is this is the concern of every uh, agencies of the government na nabagtutulungan Kasi doon sabi natin yung checklist, papasok muna si Dole DTI, then the rest will come. Depending on the level na napigay doon sa companies, over and above the basic standards. So yun ang ano natin dito. So maganda naman ito kasi we are looking forward for companies na mabigyan ng award. Uh, si Sir, ano pala yung nalimutan ko, it skip my mind. Uh, senior, ano natin? Yung EDC chair natin sa ano... Si Sir Nono, Pileta. I am sorry, Sir Nono, galitan mo talaga ako. Oh, so kahapon we were talking about the program. It was presented before the RBC. Maganda naman talaga yan. So nandoon kami kahapon ni Asik Kaberte na nag-discuss with them. So yun, Sir Asik Junji, yun ang nangyari na ngayon sa atin lahat dito sa Region 7. Oo, Ma'am Salome, alam mo, um, you know, um, Project Balik Buhay is following DTI and DOLE guidelines and getting technical um, guidance from the DOH. And uh, this might be able to help really make the safe uh, workplace safe. No? If we want health protocols followed by Do uh, health protocols of DOLE and DTI followed by the different MSMEs, businesses, and uh, other uh, stakeholders, maybe it's really good that uh, we sit down, DTI, DOLE, DOH, even DOT, 
and NEDA through uh, the committee of uh, Sir Noy Espeleta so that we'll be able to really uh, cascade the setting up of health protocols in uh, the workplace and uh, helping also uh, compliance, no full compliance of the COVID health protocols uh, in the workplace and other areas. And uh, now let me hear from uh, DTI CPO, Ma'am Esperanza Melgar uh, on really the compliance of MSMEs and businesses. No, um, after John, like um, um, Ardi Shaton already mentioned more or less the because we jointly monitored for the both MSMEs and the large. Um, I like I I'd, I'd like to focus more on the the monitoring that we did or the visits that we did with the barbershops and and restaurants. Um, basically, in the first month when they uh, of open operations, um, there were a lot who were not compliant because like having to buy a thermal scanner, they could not afford. But um, luckily, um, the compliance has improved because um, there are NGOs who are enforcing their compliance. So maybe because of that, um, compliance has improved in the among the restaurants and the barbershops. Oh. Uh, well, that's good to hear. And, uh, so yes, said, go ahead. Uh, relative to what yes. SPU has said, ang detalye doon natin is, uh, I'm looking into now the performance natin sa region together with the TI kasi may statistics akong hinahawakan ngayon. Now, ang SMS, ang micro natin dito, micro establishments that has been assisted through the joint uh, namin na uh, monitoring 2,134 of this na na-inspect coming from the micro. Tapos yung large dito is only 63. Yung small is 568. Yung medium is 59. So yun ang ano natin, yung nagawa dito as far as MSMEs is concerned. Tapos yung pinaka uh, ano natin, yung first natin na marami are those in the wholesale and retail trade. Ang second doon yung accommodation and uh, food uh, services kasi yung priority natin kanina sinasabi ni SP. So doon natin finocus kasi yun ang uh, allowed, na una na inalaw ng government or IATF na mag-open. So yun ang focus din natin sa region para at least we are one to respond to the directive sa national. So yung pinakamarami palang findings, una-una dito, ano siya? yung talagang daily accomplishment of health questionnaire, yun ang pinakamaraming hindi makumply. Yun ang findings natin, number one. Yung top five lang ha, sabihin ko, signage doon sa COVID-19 safety measures posted in the premises, wala ito. Tinutulungan natin sila. Tapos temporarily check for both work, uh, workers and visitors, yung temperature checking doon. Tapos yung contact numbers of the local health office on the yung doon sa ating uh, hotline numbers, tapos yung uh, transparent uh, mga part na to, uh, transparent barriers between the office tables and uh, the work uh, places natin. So yun ang mga top five natin ng mga violations. Result ito ng joint uh, monitoring ni Dole at DTI. So talagang doon na tayo nakafocus sa micro kasi inalaw sila to open Thus, hindi ganun sila ka, ka ano yung compliant kasi kaysa malalaki. Kasi mga malalaki nakaset up na yan, yung mga committees, ganun na sila. Pero yung mga maliliit, yun ang ating binibigyan ng din. So, salamat. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, let's hear from uh, DOT, ma'am Judy Gabato on the compliance of the tourism sector. For the Department of Tourism, especially Region 7, ASEC, uh, we are implementing the so-called the accreditation of uh, tourism enterprises or the primary tourism enterprises, which are the accommodation facilities, because we have a directive, of course, coming from the Secretary. And uh, before they can operate, we issue this per um, provisional certificate of authority uh, to operate to own accommodation establishment accredited or non-accredited. Of course, in collaboration with the local government units, we make sure that they are also uh, 
implementing the minimum public health standard. Health and safety standards is really present, and we're very happy, of course, especially in the region, uh, the Bohol, Cebu, and Negros and Siquijor, that our legislators are really strongly implementing these uh, guidelines of the Department of Tourism that before they can operate, uh, they have to get an accreditation and, of course, this uh, permit to operate. So we call it PICAO. If we cannot conduct a physical inspection, but through virtual inspection. Since there are restrictions in crossing the areas and the manpower itself of the region. So that's why the secretary allows as well the virtual inspection. And in Cebu, uh, because of the COC of the governor uh, leadership, we're very also happy with that because that will also help us monitor no, that they are really implementing the health and safety standards. Thank you, Axel. Thank you, Mom Judy. Um, maybe a question that I can ask uh, all of you, um, and this really pertains to the project Balik Buhay that uh, our office has initiated and uh, worked with um, the Department of Health and the different chambers. No, and uh, um, I, I really want to see if uh, we can work together to be able to cascade the uh, project Balik Buhay in making uh, the workplace safe. And see, Dr. Loretze was part of the group uh, of the project Balik Buhay in creating a manual that is uh, being now cascaded to the different chambers and down to the different uh, members and even to the MSME. So um, are you open to really pushing this forward uh, DTI and even DOLE and DOT and can we work together with uh, DOH so that this project Balik Buhay that is spearheaded by our office and uh, by uh, the chamber na it can really be cascaded down to the different uh, stakeholders. Uh, what do you think uh, Ma'am Salome Siaton, Ma'am uh, Esperanza Melgar and Ma'am Judy Gabato? Okay, for Dolly Region 7, we have been we have already committed ourselves relative to that ASEC. Kasi direction natin ito sa region that we'd like to make uh, uh, the workplaces safe and, and healthy as much as possible. What is the common denominator? When it is safe and healthy workplaces, we can we can invite uh, more uh, tourists to come. That's one. And the moment you can invite more tourists, kasi safety, may, safe, uh, may safety protocols tayo, tapos hindi sila malagay doon yung buhay nila at stake when they are in Cebu. So yun ang ipupush natin kasi ang common denominator dito, the more turi tourists to come, the more employment opportunities that we have. Kasi yung, yung forward and backward in tourism, the forward are accreditation of big companies and tourism. The backward are those informal sector na nagtutulong sa tourism. So yun ang ipupush natin kasi pag na-feel ng ating mga visitors na safe at saka yung health, health nila are not uh, at risk kasi nandito naman si Doc. Yun ang PPE work together natin kasi yun ang common denominator natin dito in terms of employment kasi employment is the the ano dito, the common denominator the more tourists to come the more employment opportunities yung sinabi ko backward forward yung accreditation ni DOT so kung akong tourist ako mag search lang ako doon titingnan ko DOT accredited ba ito ang another indicator doon nabigyan ba siya sa balik buhay ng parang star that I can choose na kapag nandun ako, safe ako. So, mga ganon siya. So, yung, yung pag-package natin ng Region 7, hindi ako ganon, pero yun ang pagtingin ko kasi. Pag-package natin ng Region 7 is compliance sa standards. The protocols, the OH will come, the OT will come, accredited siya. Then, another star to be added is the star that we are pushing through the balik buhay. So yung, yun ang ating gagawin here in Region 7. That's why uh, ako naman, kasi common denominator yung employment, to digit figure tayo yung unemployment, how do we address that? So linking with the different sectors will assist us. Hindi lang ito yung pinakamalaki dito sa Cebu kasi ang natatamaan na una yung mga tourism sector. Yung, di ba? 
ganun kalaki. That is why in Bayanihan 2, balik na ako, nawala ako doon, pero pag-mention na lang, Bayanihan 2, maraming sektor sa tourism, that's why Dole and tourism are magkaroon sila ng, ano nila, magkaroon sila ng working together kasi sila ang magdetermine ng accredited, Dole will be providing them, bayad kami doon sa camp. So may mga room tayong mga gagawin dito. With the, with the OT. Kasi ito ngayon yung sektor na ito natatamaan, tutulungan din sila. So siguro ASEC, malaking trabaho natin ito sa Region 7. Nandoon man kayo, nandoon rin kami, magtutulungan tayo. We have to put our acts together to make uh, Region 7 really a place na talagang ibalik natin prior to COVID yung malaking tourism industry na dapat babalikan natin lahat. Salamat. Thank you, Ma'am Salome. Um, really, we're looking forward to working with you and uh, DOH is uh, smiling here because she's uh, excited that uh, really PBB will be cascaded down to the uh, stakeholders. No? So DTI, si Ma'am Esperanza Melgar, um, what do you think about uh, working together sa PBB? Yeah, I think um, we definitely we, we are for it, no? for, um, for, for it's for the good of the economy of the region. But I think we have to balance it, of course, with the, uh, having our region safe and keeping our our employees, our businesses, uh, the employees, particularly the people, um, healthy and safe. As I All right, and now I'd, I'd like to also pose the same question to Ma'am Judy Gabato. Uh, ASEC definitely no, will uh, support the Balik Buhay because that's one thing also of uh, making sure that our travelers or our guests uh, with this health and safety uh, being implemented or in place. That's also one way to regain confidence from our travelers or guests to visit the destination like Central Visayas or Cebu. Because that's one thing that... Uh, most important now is the travelers are very um they want to make sure that the destinations they're going to visit is really um up to the health and safety uh, assurance because um as always we say that uh, before anything else we make sure that all these minimum public health and safety standards should be implemented by our stakeholders and of course us as a, a worker thank you asek Thank you, Ma'am Judy Gabato. And uh, just want to let everybody know that uh, DTI will be uploading the webinar and talks today on their YT channel. And uh, to the audience, if you want to re-watch it and even try to share uh, in your, on your Facebook page the link of this uh, webinar so that uh, more people, the audience, could uh, watch this uh, wonderful uh, conversation, straight talk on COVID health protocols and uh, my hats off to DTI and to the other uh, agencies for really coming together and talking about the importance of uh, complying with the COVID health protocols. As you know, uh, we are in a new normal and we have to live with COVID and most especially, we have to build confidence so that we can gradually reopen our economy. Tourism will be back. Tourism will, be, will flourish again. MSMEs will start to get up on their knees. And uh, we're all in this together. So my key takeaway here uh, is that, number one, it's really important to make sure that health protocols are followed and that uh, workplace safety is very important. And I'm sure... Dole, DTI, and DOT has uh, very uh, hard work ahead to just make sure that workplace safety is implemented, health protocols are followed, so that we'll be able to restart our tourism, reopen our economy, and also equally important is really to take care of the mental health of our workers, and Dole has really done a good job uh, with this, and uh, DOH is also trying to provide all their technical assistance uh, to this endeavor of making uh, the workplace safe. And that is it 
for the Department of Trade and Industry Region 7 Straight Talk on COVID Health Protocols. I hope we have shed light on the various health protocols on the four government agencies we have tapped for today's webinar. Thank you so much for our, to our panelists for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us here this afternoon. And of course, maraming salamat DTI Region 7 for initiating this webinar and for taking the time and effort to invite the best people to share their knowledge and on their respective agencies. And lastly, maraming salamat sa inyo, ating mga live viewers who patiently stayed and engaged with us all throughout the entire webinar. And I hope really uh, share this link, uh, inform your friends. If you are watching us now, please uh, share this link to your group chats, to your Viber group chats, to your um, other uh, GCs so that uh, more people will be able to listen to this wonderful conversation. If you've enjoyed today's webinar as well as our previous webinars, good news because there are more webinars coming our way. The last of the series, a webinar on food safety for food deliveries, will be happening on October 23. And another relevant uh, webinar called the Youth Entrepreneurship Program, or YEP, will be happening soon to empower and inspire young individuals to start their own business. Lastly, we are here. We are yet to have another webinar series, and this time it's geared towards MSMEs and DTI will be hosting an online course about digital marketing strategies. Through this next webinar series, DTI Region 7 aims to provide actionable digital marketing recommendations to MSMEs to help them grow their business with a minimal marketing budget. DTI 7 also aims to create a digital marketing strategy that MSMEs can apply to their local businesses to increase their revenues and customers. Once again, Thank you for joining DTI's Region 7 Straight Talk on COVID Health Protocols. For more relevant webinars, like us on Facebook at DTI Region 7 Central Visayas. To rewatch our webinars, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, DTI 7 Digital. And I'm Janji Gonzalez stay, saying that with stringent COVID health protocols, we can strive and maneuver our way in the new normal. Tuloy ang laban. Goodbye and safety. Stay safe, everyone.